is a little bit of breeze and a little bit of fog. Some light showers roll in this morning, but partly cloudy skies. We hope that's the case the rest of the way as we are just about ready to go for the 26th time overall, Furman and Samford. And we're off and running here at Seibert Stadium. The kickoff for Ian Williams goes through the end zone. So it'll be Samford first and 10 on their own 25, led by one of the best, if not the best quarterback in FCS in Michael Hires. Absolutely, he's year two in the system and we have seen him turn the ball over a little bit here as of late, but still one of the people that knows how this offense operates. Critch Hatcher has the most confidence in Michael and his numbers reflect that. Hires the reigning Southern Conference Offensive Player of the Year Threw for just 228 yards and a couple of touchdowns last time these two teams met. It was enough to give Sam for the victory as Hires drops to throw on first down, goes underneath and finds R.J. Storkey, who's gang tackled after about a pickup of five. Hugh Ryan was in there on the stop along with Caleb Williams. And one thing we're going to see is this fast-paced offense already. They're set right there, lining up for the next play. And that's one of the biggest advantages that Sanford has is their pace of play. And you hear what Coach Turner, the offensive coordinator, was telling us that they're actually subbing a little bit more. You'll see a lot of rotation of guys there in this system. So it should be an entertaining matchup there as far as personnel packages concerned. 13 yards in the first couple of snaps for Hires and company, but off target there looking for Ty King. Yvonne Yates was close in coverage. And now you see Furman rotating in defensive linemen. They want to be make sure they're fresh as the game continues to wear on because we've seen this Sanford team. They've ran, uh, you know, 80 to 100 plays almost week in and week out because of the pace in which they are there. So you're going to see a lot of bodies rotating in and out for the Paladin defense. Again, pretty good coverage there from Hugh Ryan, but R.J. Starkey, an even better grab, brings up third down and short. Sanford already back on the football. Wanting to move quickly on third down. Hires gives on the reverse. Chandler Smith has space, cuts it up across midfield and into Furman territory on third down and four. Smith picks up 17. A little early razzle dazzle. They hit him with the reverse. And again, once the defense starts flowing one way and the threat that Sanford is running the ball, you want to find a way to get your playmakers in involved in this game. And Chandler Smith on the reverse is a great way to do it. Chandler Smith and DJ Rice, two of the impact players for this Sanford offense today. Yeah, you talk about Chandler Smith and DJ Rice, guys that have played a bunch of football for this Sanford offense. They understand the ins and outs of the receiver position. And you flip that over to the defensive side, you have Callie Chiswick. Deep shot, look. that is <laughs> on the money. Brandon Jenkins, the true freshman, hauls in a 38-yard touchdown. Sanford strikes first. Just that fast, this offense continues to click, and that is a true freshman in Brendan Jenkins, a guy that I really have taken a liking to over the season so far, a freshman playing much older. They, everybody raves about him, and there he is making a play early on in this ball game, and I'm pretty sure it won't be the last time we hear from 84. One-on-one -on -one with the preseason all-socon selection, Travis Blackshear. Brendan Jenkins gets behind the pallet and defense for six. The extra point from Wilson Beaverstock is good. And in about a minute and a half, this high-flying Samford offense gets off to a quick start. 75 yards and a tutty for Samford on their home turf. An early advantage for the Bulldogs with the Paladins getting the football when we come back. Campus, a quick start for this Samford offense. Seven plays, 75 yards. Damien was capped off by this beautiful ball from Michael Hires to one of the best young receivers on this team, Brandon Jenkins. Absolutely. The more I watch him play, the more confidence he has. It looks very similar to what we saw in week one from Brandon Jennings. Again, a guy that's 18 years old, and the people absolutely love what he brings to this team, and a guy that we're going to hear for years and years to come here on at Sanford, and a guy that has natural hands. His guy, his dad played in the NFL as well, so the pedigree is there and a very, very mature young man goes out there and makes a play. We will not be surprised if he continues to make some more. Third touchdown already for Brandon Jenkins. That's back-to-back -back weeks with a touchdown grab. So Sanford strikes first, just a minute, 32 seconds. Herman's time to respond as Henry Bishop sends it deep. This is returnable and dropped. 
Now picked up and a flag is down as a hole opens up. A big crease and a big return all the way out to midfield. But a flag hanging back at the Furman 14 might bring back what was an excellent return from Colton Hilton. Yeah, after that initial drop, a guy I thought saw you a little bit of a clip. I think he got him in the block in the back, which actually made the hole and the crease for him to hit. But uh, again, a big return, having to come back, putting yourself behind the eight ball if you're the Paladin. So we're hitting an excellent return after initially bobbling it a little bit, but I think this is coming back. Block in the back. Six ten to the six thirteen. The pillow will be half the distance from the spot of the foul. First down. So half the distance from the 14 and there, right about the yeah, 12. Saw it. So a big penalty for the Paladins cost them over 40 yards of field position. Instead of setting up shop around midfield, they will start their first drive from the seven, Tyler Huff and company. Yeah, and we talk about Tyler Huff, a guy that is not afraid of the big moment. And you listen to Coach Boom, defensive coordinator for Sanford, and he knows, like he even took it alike into him and just saying he's tough, he's physical, he's not afraid of anything. And we're gonna see a lot of confident play from number six going out into this ball game. His first pass to Joshua Harris is dropped. A couple of early bobbles from these Furman receivers. And when we talked to Coach, H Coach Hendricks early on this week, he told us that we're gonna try to our best to get our receivers out, make them more active. Again, like there's nobody that has truly separated themselves out of the bunch. But he even said we need to attack teams more vertically to make sure they understand that we're not afraid to throw the ball. Quick RPO, that's caught, but quickly there to greet him is Devin Smith. So a short gain that time on second down for Harris. It'll bring up third down and five. Here's a look at Huff, the transfer from Presbyterian, now his fifth year of college football. What a story, three seasons of Presbyterian commissioned into the Army Reserves to help pay for college playing in the Pioneer League, then transferred to Furman. Now in his second season here at the helm of this Paladin offense. On third down and four, an empty backfield for Huff. Looking left, now right, now running, not gonna get the first down. Brought down by Josh Mathiason, Joseph Mera in the mix as well, and Furman goes three and out. That is a big, big stop right there for this defense. And anytime you talk to Coach Boone, he emphasizes Third down, and then at third and medium range, you find a way to get pressure. Great coverage on the back side from everyone there in the secondary for Sanford, and a big, big three and out against this Paladin offense. So the Paladins forced the punt. Ryan Levy from the goal line. It's away a pretty good kick. Chandler Smith will take it from the 45, straight up the middle, and he picks up seven or eight yards on the return, which means Sanford will start in plus territory for their second drive. Yeah, and again, at that first drive, it was so quick. We saw the pace in which this offense continues to run at and a high, high clip. And Michael Hires looked comfortable. We saw some deep routes. You saw some short underneath things. You saw the full gamut in those seven plays. And I continue to look at this offense and how they continue to develop week in and week out, the comfortableness of everybody knowing exactly what their job is. And we saw a freshman end up with a touchdown at the end of it. 11 personnel to start the drive for Sanford. Michael Weiss into the game for the first time. Hires, pocket collapsing, he's going down. The first Furman sack of the day belongs to Bryce Stanfield. That was a great pressure right there by Paladin, the Paladin defense. They swarm really with an inside twist. And the guys get back there, rattle and get, get a sack on first down. Big, big drive, big stop right there for the Paladin defense. Sanford's going backwards again. A movement before the snap is going to make this second and very long. False start, number 62 and 58. Five yard penalty, second out. Chris Noble, the UAB transfer, and Jabari Brooks both moving before the snap. And that's the biggest thing is the self inflicted wounds that we've seen this Bulldog team have. And when you talk to Coach Hatcher, he understands when you look at how efficient this offense is, the one caveat that they have are penalties and turnovers in key situations. That gets a lot of that back, although the ball comes out late. Was Mason down? A whistle did blow. E.J. Mason rolled down after Furman picked up the loose ball. We're going to look at it here. Was E.J. Mason brought to the ground before that ball got ripped out? Ooh, it's close. 
That might get stopped for replay. I think it should as he's going down. I'm not sure the body had hit the ground by the time the ball was out. Here Ryan trying to rip it away. He was ruled down on the field, third down and five. And before the snap, replay does come in. They want a second look. The rules on the field is the runner's down prior to losing possession. The previous play previous is under further under review. Further review. So again, from the angles that we have, it looked like it may have been out before his body had hit the ground. I think that elbow and knee was, I mean, it was close. But again, the ruling on the field that he was down before the ball came out. Does that elbow get to the ground before Ryan jostles it free? <laughs> About as close as he can possibly be. But again, if the ruling on the field is that he was down, unless it's clear and concise, they're they're going to be able they're not going to be able to overturn it. But such a bang bang play. The replay official today is Brian and Galsby. Our referee is Jeff Page. And if you're a Furman fan, the last thing you want is a lengthy replay review. That still stings from that matchup between these two teams a year ago in Greenville. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. The player was down prior to the So not enough to overturn a call on the field. So third down and five, Sanford maintains possession. Right now you're in third and medium for Sanford. Have the full gamut at your disposal as far as playbook. Right now this Paladin defense, if you really want to make a stop and don't want to find yourself down to possession, make a play right here on third down. Out of the flat, Stanton can't make a man miss. He is met right at the line of scrimmage by Braden Gilby. And that brings up a decision here for Sanford on fourth and medium. And that was a great open field stop because we know how explosive Jay Stanton is. That was a full body tackle. And notice when he was trying to make the play, he's going for the football in the midst of the tackle. He's trying to go for it, for it rip it out. We talk about this opportunistic defense and how many turnovers they've had just in a short span of games. And last season, they were number one overall in forced turnovers, and they continue to try and get the ball any way they possibly can. So Sanford will play field position, punt it away from the Furman 41. A little Thorley, end over end kick. That'll be fair caught around the 14 yard line. So fair catch made there by Harris, timeout on the field. Sanford on top, 7-0. The Furman Paladin offense gets their second crack. Back here at Bobby Bowden Field, Cyber Stadium, for the Sanford Bulldogs. Still very early in the first quarter here between the number four ranked Paladins and Sanford. Poor field position for the Paladins once again as Dominic Roberto picks up three, maybe four yards on the carry. And the guy that they're definitely going to feature in this offense, Dominic Roberto, a guy that has played for a long time here for the Paladins. And, I mean, he is a handful to tackle. Not very often do you see him go down with just one person. At 230 pounds, he's definitely huff. Under pressure, escapes the pocket, dives forward for three or four. Didn't see a whole lot of open receivers downfield. At least sets up third and short. Yeah, coming out on that rollout, I think he had somebody backside on a deep over. I don't think he saw him in time. He ended up being open, but he didn't get a chance to pull the trigger, kind of just eats it, sets him up for a third and short right here. And again, somebody we talked about, Robert, Roberto, uh, Dominic Roberto, he's going to be uh, featured here on this third and one for sure. And he's got plenty for the first out, keeps the legs churning across the 30 to the 33. Easy first down for the Paladins. Damian, that's been a feature of this Furman offense. A lot of third and shorts, and they pick them up as well. The best third down offense in the SOCON. Absolutely. Coach Boone had an emphasis on it when he was discussing this third down. They find themselves in third and short at a very, very high clip. And again, when you have a 230-pound running back, the play call seems pretty easy as far as what you need to do in those third and short situations. Incomplete looking for Joshua Harris, who just couldn't quite get his head turned around in time on that RPO. Sanford will make mass changes across their fronts. Johnny Johnson into the game for the first time. A 
name of the game. Try to get those big boys up front changed out. Both these teams working with plenty of tempo early. A give on second down, Roberto plunges forward and picks up nine. He's going to be just shy of first down yardage. And again, you find yourself in a third and short situation with a guy that big out of your backfield. And something we've seen him for, for years, the guy that has, doesn't mind carrying the load as far as the running game goes for the Paladin offense. Big time block there from the big tight end, Mason Pline, to open up that hole. Third down and short, empty backfield here for Huff, who now brings Roberto back into the mix. Huff keeps it himself going forward. That's going to be close. I don't think he got there. That was a good, good stop right there on third down. Brings up fourth and inches, and I wonder if we see any sort of any sort of the tush push that we see in the NFL. <laughs> Huge tackle there from Xavier Nurse, the transfer from Maine. Fourth down and maybe the length of the football. Furman keeping the offense on the field from their own 42. Huff gives it inside. Roberto picks up the first down across the 45. And that was pretty much a given. You know, again, with number eight being in the backfield and how punishing of a runner that he is at 230-plus pounds, it shouldn't be too hard as a play caller. Look at him, find a way to get us a yard. And if he doesn't, it's more on him being that big than it would be anybody else. But again, you find yourself in a situation fourth and short and didn't even have to think about it. Off the play fake, an open receiver, and it's intercepted, deflected, and picked off by Dante Pollard. Sanford forces the takeaway. Right there, Huff just kind of airmails it, coming out of the break on the rollout. Sells it a little too high out of the reach. And bad things happen when you miss high. And what a great play. Getting his hands up under it, ensuring that he caught the pass. And yes, an interception for this Sanford defense. Still in a possession early on against Furman. Third straight game with an interception for this Sanford defense. Dante Pollard, the transfer from Akron off the deflection. Colton Hinton got one hand up there, but couldn't get two. Damien, if you feel like from Sanford's perspective, they got to take advantage of excellent field position once again. Absolutely. This is the top five football team there at Furman, and the opportunities that you have, you have to take full advantage of. And something big, we're scoring after a turnover, you've got to be able, especially with the short field plus territory, you've got to find a way to make a play. Ball will actually be backed up right at the 50. Big mistake there from Tyler Huff, and now Sanford trying to cash it in. On top by a score already. Trying to make it a two-score game with six and a half minutes to go here in the first. Trips to the field for Hires on first down. He gives inside and a good gain on first down. Monte Witherspoon, his first carry, the transfer from Murray State. And again, now we're seeing this pace. All they did was just flip the formation to the other side, line it up, and they're already ready for their second down play. Witherspoon dives forward. I think he's going to be just shy of first down yard of Jevin DiMaggio in there on the stop. And it is going to be third down at about a half yard. Sanford snaps it in 10 seconds. Witherspoon has the first down, and maybe a couple more yards inside the Furman 40. And again, just the pace that they're doing. This is already their fourth play in a span of 15 yards. And it's just the speed and tempo in which this Sanford program runs. Fake the bubble, want to go deep. Chandler Smith's behind the defense. Touchdown, Sanford. The second 38-yard touchdown for Hires in the first quarter. If it stands, there's a flag in the Sanford backfield. But what patience in the routes and also the setup. You fake the bubble and the guys almost ran a post wheel concept and just so patient in the route to be open in that play, but all for not there with the face mask making it back. So the touchdown pass wiped away a 15 yard penalty against this Sanford offensive line and pass protection. That's the biggest, biggest blow 
for this Sanford offense. You never want to be able – you never want to take points away, especially when it's self-inflicted. Big touchdown there, called back on a penalty. So Sanford all the way back at their own 47. A quick toss, DJ Rias back for the first time in a few weeks, makes his first grab. And a guy these guys – are happy to have back for the Sanford offense, the leader, a guy that has played a bunch of football and has known is one of the better blockers and the receiving room. Flip out to Witherspoon who gets back to the Furman 40 before he's brought down. A couple of tacklers in there, including Callie Chizik. Now you're looking at third and long and again, when you have a big penalty that sets you back so far, there's only so many plays for third and 12. Hires under pressure, he's going down again. The second time Michael Hires is sacked, DiMaggio was in there along with Gilby. And for the second straight possession, Sanford starts in Furman territory and this Furman defense forces them to kick it away. Kind of a delayed stunt there as the linebacker kind of reads it out and as soon as he sees Michael put his face down to look away from his progression, he, he ends up, you know, crashing the party back there in the backfield again. Penalties against the Sanford offense have set them back. You just had points wiped away, and now you end up uh, flipping the field and punting the ball after causing a turnover. Will Thorley to punt for the second time, a short kick. Harris coming up to receive it, instead lets it bounce and now takes it at the 10. A difference of about eight yards of field possession there for the Paladins. They will set up shop from their own 10-yard line when we come back. Furman trying to flip the field, get something going offensively when we return to Birmingham after this quick break. Left Sanford defensive coordinator Chris Boone is down on the field, the third member of our crew, Taylor Coffin. We found out a little bit how Chris Boone and his staff differentiate days of the week, but they're getting ready for a fresh opponent. Really fun. So one thing he talked about was that in the last two years, they have 50 new players join on defense. And to kind of bring everybody together, they have different playlists for each day of the week. Monday is country music, Tuesdays 80s, Wednesdays the blues, and Thursdays old school rap. But Coach Boone said his game day playlist for himself has to include some ACDC and also a little bit of country because he coached at JSU when Riley Green, the country singer, played quarterback for the Gamecocks. So he has to give him a little bit of love too, you guys. Respect, thanks Taylor. Quite the diversified playlist from Coach Boone and this defensive staff. I know it, man, and it's so fun as a player when you go in just having those you know, loose meetings and kind of just know what the expectation is day in and day out. It's always fun, and when you watch this defense play, it's almost like they've taken the identity of what Coach Boone is as far as tenacity, being able to gang tackle and, and, and everything predicates on what he calls defensively. Biggest play of the day so far for this Furman offense, Ben Ferguson, the Texan with his first grab. RPO picks up 14 yards. Furman trying to find some way to flip the field here. Feels like they've been playing in the shadow of their own goalpost the entire first quarter. Huff keeps it this time, looking for room on the left side and is gang tackled just shy of the 35. There's one thing that we know that we got from every coach that we meet, met with this week. Tyler Huff, he is tough. Like, he's a guy that's not afraid to put his face in there. He's got a lot of moxie. He's confident as a quarterback. And for this Paladin offense, I mean, he was the leading rusher coming into the game, and he's not afraid. They're, call, they're calling quarterback design runs. I mean, he's a little bit bigger than you think, but he's also not afraid to dial it up. Coverage good down the field. The pass incomplete, but here come the flags. Again, looking on that over route, this time for Nick Cannon. Sanford defensive back collided with him as the ball was in the air. If you're Furman, you'll take these yards any way you'll get them. Again, it has been kind of tough starting this game out, kind of filling Pass it out as far as the Defense offense. Number 24. P.I. right the there. The penalty includes an automatic first down. That's Jonathan Searcy, the Bucknell transfer. It there on the over and kind of a bang bang and ends up with a pass interference. Furman at midfield on first down, Huff on the keeper, makes a man miss and picks up a good gain. Eight yards on first down before Searcy got him around the ankle. 
one thing that you like about Huff as he plays, when you go back and watch the tape on him, again, he's not afraid to run it. Like, he's not afraid to make the smart decision. He does a good job of putting his face in there, working with what he has. He's also sneaky athletic, and that's what Coach Boone referred to us during the meeting. He's like, he's, he's got a little more wiggle than you expect. Corner blitz. Huff breaks a tackle. He's into the open field, across the 25 and out of bounds. 19 more yards on the ground for Tyler Huff. And as this game continues to roll along, that's going to be a very, very big weapon for this Paladin offense is the use of Huff's legs on top of having, you know, Roberto in the backfield as well. The ground game right now is starting to piece itself together for this Furman offense. And if you're Sanford, you've got to be able to make a stop at some short gain because now you're getting a lot of juice and you have to keep your eye on the quarterback run. Huff off the play fake, wants to go towards the end zone. Back shoulder, that's hold in. Joshua Harris, did he get a foot down? No. I don't think he completed the catch all the way through. But that was a great play. Great play design, perfect placement. Just got to be able to finish and follow through with the catch. Ball knocked, Ball knocked down knocked late out. there by Devin Smith. Looked like Harris got a foot down but couldn't complete the process of the catch as he went to the ground. Two back look for Furman on second and 10. Huff throws the slant, that is caught. And a tight space, Luke Shiflet, the transfer from MTSU has his first grab. Third down and short. That was a nice strike by Huff. Getting that, I mean, he got hit knowing he's gonna be on the backside, but putting in absolute tight window. Very, very good throw. Eighth catch of the year for Shiflets. Originally they called it third and short. Now they'll move the sticks. First down and goal from right at the 10 for the Paladins. Trying to tie this game up with a minute left in quarter number one. Up on the give. Roberto cuts it up, finds some space inside the five before he's chopped down. And if you're Furman, you don't want to get cute down here in the red zone. You don't want to give this Sanford defense time because we've seen them make turnovers in the red zone a couple games that we've had. Right now, you just want to call the safe plays, the, no, the, the higher chance of you getting into the end zone. Again, when you have eight back there in the backfield, I don't think it's too difficult to just say, hey, we'll give it to you four times, and if you can't get us in, we just won't get in. It is Roberto again who is brought down inside the two. Cortland Marsh stuck his head in there. A couple other Bulldogs finished it off. Right now, this could be a big stop if you're Sanford on the defense. If you can find a way to keep them out of the end zone, be a big third down as we come back here in the second quarter. Quarter comes to a close. Furman will take it to the opposite end of the field. It'll be third down and two from the two. When we return to Birmingham after this, 15 minutes in the books. Sanford on top for the number four team in the country, 7-0 with Furman. Who said a little hard work can't be fun? <laughs> Getting ready to start the second quarter here. Bobby Bowden Field at Seifert Stadium. Good start for Sanford in front of their home crowd. On top of Furman by seven, but the Paladins threatening. Third down and goal from the two as we flipped ends from one side to the other. Furman trying to finish off a drive that so far has canvassed 88 yards of this turf. Looking for two more over the next couple of snaps. Huff in the gun, Roberto to his right. Huff off the play fake, wide open. Harris walks it in for the touchdown. That's a great play design coming out of the break. Move a guy in motion, get him a running start, just get into the pylon, the front pylon in the flats. Flash it, show it down, give it the threat of run, and all it takes is that one misstep inside by the defensive end. Leaves that flat open for a touchdown. And now, again, we find ourselves potentially tied again. Got ourselves a ball game, folks. Extra point is up, extra point is good. And we are tied at seven apiece. After a tough start for this Furman offense, a good drive that 
covered 90 yards over the course of 10 plays. Just what Tyler Huff and the Paladins were looking for. Absolutely, and when they started going back, I mean, they started with such a you know bad field position the first couple plays, first couple drives, and they started putting that one together, chewed up a lot of clock, chewed up a lot of ground. And again, it's a balanced attack. You saw for every run there was a couple passes. It was a perfect mix. And also you look at that defensive pass interference, aided them another first down for that Sanford defense. So now if you're Furman, find yourself in this ball game, you're patient. And again, you see why you're a top five program. So the Paladins respond seven apiece, just four seconds into the second quarter. Sanford's offense, chance to touch the football once again. Ian Williams to send it deep for Furman. A line drive kick, fair caught by Ty King and his one. So Sanford first and 10 from their own 25. Damien, what have you seen from the Sanford offense so far? It's been a little bit of a, a balanced attack. Again, if you didn't have the penalty there the, that stalled the touchdown drive. The offense has looked re rather well. Uh, it's got a lot of balance and you got your playmakers out in space. The biggest thing for the offensive line to continue to keep Michael clean. And you look for on this drive right here, you see a lot, DJ Rias has made a couple catches. You see Brendan Jenkins back on the field. The biggest thing is just spreading the will. Already seven different receivers have caught a pass from hires in a quarter. On first down and 10, a give to Jay Stanton who's probing for some space. Picks up maybe three yards before he is brought down. Looks like Jack Barton got the final shove, but a host of guys were in there. Luke Clark, one of them, the starting bandit for this Paladin front. We'll give Stanton three and a half on second and six. Hires find Stanton out in the flat, trying to turn it up the field, close to a first down. It was brought down by Kelly Chizik, the Auburn, Alabama native. And they are going to give Sanford first down yardage. It's a great play right there. Just give them the last little bit, knowing you got to get that first down. And that chains move for the Sanford offense. And again, they haven't shown too much as far as Furman on the defensive side. They've gotten to Michael a couple times, gotten a little a few pressures. But as far as the offense, it really has been clicking more of late. Hires a deep drop, now steps up, still keeps the eyes down the field, tucks and runs, fumbles the football. Jay Stanton jumped on it. Sanford fortunate there as the ball came out late. It's only a loss of one. Yeah, Michael was looking for that deep shot. Almost like a big post. They had two posts backside. And yeah, the ball did come out, but again, we haven't be, we haven't seen Michael have to tuck it and run. But when he does, he is an efficient runner for the Sanford offense. On target to Ty King right at the sticks. That should be good enough for a Sanford first down. And it is. First down Bulldogs. So they avoid turning over the football. Pick up first down yardage. Hires a deep throw to the flat. Chandler Smith makes the grab before he's knocked out of bounds. Callie Chiswick was over there. So was Evan DiMaggio. It is a pickup of about four. Sanford's offense continues to move. Hires claps for the football. This time a give. Jay Stanton cuts it up, gets into Furman territory, picks up maybe three or four, but a flag down. And this is in the area of holding. It looked like Jack Barton might have been held trying to jump in, make the initial tackle. Sanford already moving backwards. That's fucking holding, holding 54 the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot will replay second down. That's Luke Byrne, the junior from Forsyth, Georgia. Yeah, just kind of getting your hands outside. Wrapping around. Uh. There wasn't a ton there. Yeah, well, right. And again, I mean, I. Glad I'm not a referee. <laughs> Instead of third and short, it's second down and long. Second and 16 officially. Higher sets up the screen. Jenkins has some blockers, has some space across the 45 before he's shoved out of bounds by Gilby. That's good enough to move the chains. That's a great play call right there. Working that tunnel screen, working back. And again, when you have blockers in front of you, when you have blockers in front of you, that's a great position to be in. Again, the freshman continuing to make plays. 
Quarterback design run this time for Hires, who gets down around the 37 yard line. So Rod Cook there, the transfer from Division II Wingate, making sure Hires didn't pick up much more than a few. Sanford driving into Furman territory. Jay Stanton, not a whole lot there. Wrapped up around the ankles that time. Right now for Sanford, I think you're in four down territory. If you don't get a first right here, I think Coach Hatcher will probably go for this, just knowing how this game is going to be. Furman bringing pressure on third down. Michael Weiss, the big tight end, has first down yardage before he's driven back. We spoke about in our meetings about that H position and having you know a guy like Michael Weiss back in this offense and the security blanket that they have with a bigger body as we see a false start there, but the bigger body guys that are able to just call personnel packages with them in there and also stand them up outside wide, put their hand in the dirt, you know, and play, you know, attached tight end on the offensive line being able to block. False start, 62 and 75 the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Corey Brooks and Jamie Motley Simmons, who's in at left tackle for Sanford. With the backup tackles in the game right now for the Bulldogs, Jamie Motley Simmons at left tackle, the transfer from UAB. Zach Brown at right tackle. So Sanford shuffling a little bit up front. On first and 15. Tires well protected, didn't have anywhere to go with the football, the coverage sack. Third time today, Hires has been brought down. This time it was Xavier Stevens. And that was great coverage on the back side of that secondary for the Paladins, I mean, they matched up everything, everything that went vertical, they had an opening for, and for Mike, it's just as soon as he's, his eyes went down, he wasn't able to get out of the pocket and escape. But it's a big, big cover sack for this Paladin defense. So after the penalty and now a sack, it is second and 25. Hires throws short, Chandler Smith turns it up the field, and stayed on his feet, got all the way to the 35. So that's a gain of 11 to help get some of that penalty yardage and sack yardage back. And something we've seen in the past couple of weeks is that that bubble, almost an extension of the run game for the Sanford offense. And again, as a receiver myself, being selfless and understanding that you have to make the block you in, in order to spread you know, guys like Chandler Smith out to be able to get those yardage, you have to be able to go out there and block effectively. And that's something that Coach Turner preaches to this receiver room of those guys just getting after. Two tight ends for Sanford on third and long. Hires looking, looking, a long throw to Vice who couldn't haul it in with one hand. And now this is a tough spot here for this Sanford offense. Fourth and long. This would be a 52-yard field goal. I don't think Wilson Beaverstock has that, so Sanford once again from plus territory is going to be forced to punt. You kind of find yourself in no man's land in that situation. Having to go back after a sack and a penalty. Right now at that 35 yard line where it's too long for a field goal. You have to settle for a punt just knowing you're that close to the end zone. Will Thorley punts it away, trying to bury Furman deep inside their own half again, and he does. That is caught right at the one-yard line. Tyke Tabor made the play in punt coverage, and Furman will start from the shadow of their own goalpost again. 9.53 to go in the first half. Tied so far today between Furman and Sam for the Paladins take over on offense, looking for their second straight scoring drive when we come back. Birmingham today. The biggest, if not the biggest, road test so far this year for the Furman Paladins. Furman trying to go on the road, take out the defending Southern Conference champions, the Sanford Bulldogs, avenge their only conference loss of the year from a season ago. Furman had a road test early in the year. I'd say at South Carolina is a road test. But <laughs> First road test in Southern Conference plays, certainly, and they have been backed up to start pretty much every offensive series. This one starts inside their own two. Tyler Huff and company, not a whole lot of room to operate with from the end zone. Hard count, might as well, right? See if Sanford will give you a <laughs> few yards. Right. See if they're going to do any shifting or anything once they brought the guy in motion and reset him. 
Huff, a quick throw, that is caught, so a bit of breathing room for the Paladins. Joshua Harris hauls in his third catch of the day. And that's the thing about this Paladin offense, but with how balanced of attack they've had, you know, all season long, to have situations like that where, hey, we're, we'll flash it real quick, so the RPO, hit them on a you know, short route just to get ourselves some breathing room being backed up. And like you said, every drive has seemed like they have been inside their own 25. Huff keeps it again, a deep throw. That is hold in. Harris, did he get a foot down? Yes, he did. What a throw from the hash to the opposite boundary. Tyler Huff showing off the arm strength. And that's such a far throw to make for a quarterback. Again, like you said, be on one hash. And not only did you hit it, you know, over 15 yards in the air, like that's almost a 45-yard throw just to get, you know, 15. Joshua Harris already with four catches for 30 yards today, including the touchdown. This a big play to Wayne Anderson Jr. into Sanford territory all the way down near the 40, a gain of close to 37 yards. You know, Wayne Anderson making that adjustment from running back to receiver, and now you shuffle him out right there. You just get him in space. And something that Coach Hendricks talked about in our meetings with him this week is, like, we got to find a way to continue to get him the ball. You know, he's had to make the adjustment of being a running back for so long and also transitioning into receiver as well. And you, like you said, just working in space, find a way to give him the ball. He's one of your best playmakers on the Paladin offense. That time Anderson brought down by Noah Martin. Wayne Anderson, a cool story. The native of Prosper, Texas, came into this Furman program as a running back, transitioned to wide receiver. But this Paladins team that started the year with five healthy running backs is really down to two, Roberto and Mayan Hicks. So Wayne Anderson going to see a few more carries out of the backfield. That's where he's been the last three plays. Second down and long here for the Paladins. Second and eight from inside the Sanford 40. Anderson, another touch. And again, he's met in the hole by Martin. Right now you find yourself in third and medium, third and manageable. But again, just a big play explosiveness for Wayne Anderson, a guy, like you said, making the transition from running back to receiver and getting his fair share of running back reps right now. It's almost like riding a bike. Third down and five here for the Paladins. We'll check to the sideline before this big third down. Furman, two of four on third down so far. They need to just shy of the 30 to move the chains. Huff. Fakes the give, keeps it himself, has the first down, spins across the 25. And there we go with those quarterback design runs. Again, he flashes it in there, follows him up right behind him, almost just pretty much being a lead blocker there as Wayne Anderson sticks it up in there. But again, something that we brought up you know, in the broadcast as far as the utilization of Huff's legs as well as his arm is starting to show. In a situation like that, you got him in third and medium, your quarterback gets it with his leg. Already 52 yards on the ground for Huff, who play fakes this time, sets up the screen. Roberto breaks the tackle. Noah Martin finally wrestles him down, but not before he picks up about six more. <laughs> they even fooled me on the screen, man. They had a guy crossing over, 12 was getting over over there on the crosser. But again, we had the screen set up on the back side. But that'd be something that you basically want to take a peek at if you give them the same look, that same flash, and they still don't have anybody guarding there on the over route. Maybe something to look out for if you're the Sanford secondary. Second big drive in a row here for Furman. Already 82 yards covered on this march. Roberto plows his way inside the 15. Couple of guys a bit slow to get off the pile there. Noah Martin, Josh Mathiason in on the stop for Samford. Looks like Luke Pettit, the Akron, Ohio native, is going to go back down. Sixth consecutive start here for Pettit after he missed pretty much all of last season with a knee injury. And he's down hurts around the 14 yard line now. So Timeout on the field, we'll take it with him. Five and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Furman in the red zone in a tie ball game when we come back. Campus over the Sanford Bulldogs taking on the Furman Paladins for the 26th all-time meeting. In a series that's basically been split right down the middle. 13-12 in favor of the Paladins. 
course, Sanford dealt Furman their only Southern Conference loss in Greenville a year ago. Furman, a bit of revenge on their minds, perhaps here in Homewood today. Now the timeout have third down and short inside the red zone for the second straight drive. Huff with two backs on third and one. Off play action, has a man in the flat. That is caught, and it sets up first and goal. Ben Ferguson's second catch today. That's such a great flow, as you saw. Like Again, when it's third and short, you're just thinking, hey, they're going to hand this off to Dominic Roberto. He's 230 pounds. They give him that flash, stretch it out, hit a guy in the flats, and continue to get these chains moving. Such a long drive here for this Furman offense, and it's not, uh, kind of motivating to see with the big explosive play we saw from Wayne uh, Anderson earlier. And now finding yourself inside the, the red zone as opposed to being behind the chains in your own red zone earlier. First and goal for the Paladins. Play clock running short, and Furman's going to be forced to take a timeout, which they will with 4.46 to go. Timeout, timeout, Furman. Furman. Their first Their timeout first of the half. 30 second 30 timeout. timeout. By the way, Luke Pettit was ushered to the Furman injury tent. Blake Hunley, the redshirt junior, who's made one start this year into the game for Furman at left guard. Damien, as you said, two drives in a row here. The Paladins have found their rhythm after struggling to find it early. Yeah, and it, again, it's the flow in which they have, you know, play design. They're getting their players the ball. Again, they'll have, you know, a little shuffle out for Wayne Anderson there early in the downs to get a big explosive play. And it's just one of the unique things that this Paladin offense does. Again, with the balance that they have, being able to run it with a stretch, being able to run it inside the zone, and the utilization of Huff's legs. I mean, we saw him convert a third down on this drive, you know, with a quarterback run. And the, the dynamic ability that he has at that position, being able to run and throw effectively, it helps this Paladin offense to find them in situations like this. First and goal for the nine for Furman. Huff off play action, looking on the slant, now throws to the flat. Anderson holds it in and is brought down around the five yard line. Noah Martin was there, Jonathan Searcy there as well, combining on the stop. And that was a good read by the secondary for Sanford, not you know biting on that play action and being able to make an open field tackle, Noah Martin. And that's a big, big stop right there. And again, for Furman, you don't want to get too cute, especially in this situation with Sanford being, you know, one of the opportunistic defenses there because we've seen them take advantage in the red zone and have red zone turnovers. Huff keeps it, throwing in zone. That's incomplete. Dante Pollard was draped on Joshua Harris. That's there aren't many times as a former receiver myself that I'd say, you know, great play by the defensive back, but that was a great bait, great play by Pollard. Giving up a little bit on the inside, but working around over the top. May or may not have a little bit of PI, but if the refs don't throw the flag, it didn't happen. <laughs> Pollard's already got the interception today, a big PBU there. Third down and goal from the five for Furman. Huff drops, looking to the end zone, surveying, running out of real estate, rolling right. Still rolling, he's going down, he lost the football and fortunate to get it back, but he's dropped all the way back at the 21 yard line. And Huff is gonna kick himself where he knows that he could have just gotten rid of it, lived to fight another play. But again, when you're in a situation like that, you just want to put the ball in the end zone. But getting a little careless with it, going for the ball as Cortland Marsh right there. Knocks it out, you're fortunate to recover, but you do make this field goal a little bit longer as opposed to being having a shorter field and potentially a, a play to go for it if you're still within that five yard range. Noah Martin credited with the sack. So a field goal here for Ian Williams. Snap is good, hold is good, and the kick is perfect. Ian Williams knocks it down. He's now four for seven this year, and Furman, for the first time today, has a lead. Officially a 12-play, 79-yard scoring march for the Paladins, who have scored 10 straight points. 3.07 to go here in the first half. The number four team in the country in front for the first time today. Here on ESPN, Furman on top of Sanford, 10-7, with three minutes to go here in the half. When these two teams met in Greenville, it was Furman who jumped out to an early edge on top 10-0 in a matter of moments. And 
Sanford scored 34 points over the second and third quarters to power them to a 34-27 win. It was Sanford who jumped out to an early advantage a minute and a half in. Bulldogs offense has been held in check since. They had trips to Furman territory, but have been turned away outside the 30. Furman with a couple of straight scoring drives. Let's put themselves in front for the first time. 3.07 to go to the first half. Sanford will get the football back, and then Furman, remember, will receive the second half kickoff as Williams sends it deep. Ty King won't bother with that. It'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 25. And the biggest thing for Sanford has been, again, those self-inflicted penalties, those, you know, big plays having to come back because of a holding or a face mask and things like that. When you find yourself behind the chains of situations, even in that last possession that we saw the Sanford offense, they end up having to punt on the opponent's 35. Sanford with 157 yards of offense, but five penalties for 50 yards. Four of those five penalties have been against this Sanford offense. So first down and 10 for Michael Hires and company. Hires wants to take a shot, a deep post to Ty King. He's got it in his grasp, but only for a moment. Knocked away, Travis Blackshear might have had something to do with that. Ty, in that route, I didn't think Ty, he thought he was gonna get it. He had to play catch up there for a little bit. But a catch you have to have in that situation as he beats himself up for it. As a receiver, man, if it hits your hands, it pretty much is automatic. Good moves from Chandler Smith. Turned what looked like it could have been a negative play into a pickup of five. Smith, five yards on his third reception of the day, brings up a crucial third down. Sanford three for six so far on third down today. Big play that they've missed there on first down. Hires quick drop, throwing to the flat. He's got a man. Ian Cousin, the transfer from Kennesaw State. His first grab moves the chains. And that's a great throw by Michael, protecting his guy as well, hitting him on the backside, protecting him from getting crushed by that safety. Put him in a great position. It's such a great throw, anticipatory throw. Cousin, another catch this time on the bubble screen, but a great play. Out near the Furman sideline, Cali Chizik stops that for no gain. That's a big open field tackle right there to stop that bubble for no gain. Just playing through the block, being violent, shredding the block, and going out there making an open field tackle. Hires on second down, looking right, Chandler Smith hauls it in, almost broke out of that tackle. He did get across midfield before he was brought down by Caleb Williams. And if you're just tuning in, you would think, oh, yeah, like this offense, they're just going hurry up because it's under two minutes. No, this is just the normal pace in which they play. And again, you see you got your playmaker in Chandler Smith getting the ball. On third and five, a give to Jay Stanton, trying to get first down yardage. He's going to be just short. Decision time here for Sanford. They're not wasting any time. On fourth down and one, the offense already on the football. Hires claps for it. Stanton probing for the first down. It's going to be close, and I don't think he got there. Depends on the spot, but right now from, from our view, it looks like he is short. Referees are going to take a look at it. Based on where they put the football, that is well short. Sanford turns it over. Furman's defense holds once again. And that's such a deflating possession right there to have it on fourth and short, not be able to get that one yarded that you need. And now you're giving this Furman offense the ball again. And on top of that, they receive the second half kickoff because you could find yourself in a situation, if you're Sanford defense, you, this is a big, big pivotal moment in this ball game. What a sequence there for Cali Chizik. He stopped the bubble for no gain at the start of that set of downs. He was the key man to make the tackle there on fourth and short. Furman's defense, a big stop, and they've got two of their three timeouts to work with here with a minute seven to go in the first half. Huff, time to throw to the flat. Wayne Anderson out of bounds around the 48, a pickup of three. Good job right there, just getting out of bounds. Huff not trying to force anything. 
Dump it off to your back in the flat. Let him get out of bounds and set it up for another play. Tyler Huff hasn't made a ton of big plays in the passing game, but he settled in after the early interception. 11 of 16 for 109 yards and a touchdown. On second and seven, Huff delivers on targets. Ben Ferguson inside the Sanford 40. Clock stops for a moment to reset the change. Now we see Huff in this offense start to speed it up just a little bit. Right here, definitely want to finish his drive a point. Huff looking to the sideline. Ferguson again, a leaping grab and out of bounds around the 22, a gain of 16. It's a great catch right there on the corner. Strong hands going able, knowing that you're, you're leaving your body successful to the hit, but you still have strong hands and able to get out of bounds again as this drive continues along. That's a big, big throw and catch from Huff to Ferguson. Sophomore from the Woodlands, Texas, just outside of Houston. A couple of big plays on this hurry up drive. Two catches for 29 yards on back-to-back -back snaps. Sanford on the edge, or Furman on the edge of the red zone as Huff keeps and is chopped down around the 15 by Garrett Morris. And Furman will take one of those two timeouts, stop the clock with 37 timeout. seconds left. Furman. This is our second timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Media timeout. So we'll take a timeout as well. Furman on top by three, but a chance to add to their lead late in the first half when we return to Cybert Stadium right after this. Greenville to Birmingham, plenty of purple in the crowd opposite the press box today. What a great start for the number four team in the country, Furman, but two straight scoring drives. They're trying to make it a third straight before this half comes to a close. Out of the timeout, second and short. Huff, plenty of time to throw. We'll just throw it into the sidelines. Yeah, some great coverage there by Sanford, keeping everything in front of them. Not going to give up the end zone. Everybody playing to the sticks and nothing got behind them. And again, Huff just has to eat it. It's a big third down right here, especially for Sanford. If you can hold them to a field goal on this drive, you'll take that as a small victory in the grand scheme of it after you gave them a short field offensively. So third down and two for the Paladins. Huff will keep it himself off the play fake. He's got the first down, a big stiff arm, gets him inside the tent before Searcy brought him down. Furman has to hustle. The clock stops for a moment to reset the chains, but it'll start again here right now. The Paladins, rather than use that timeout, will clock it with 21 seconds left. So right now, you're finding yourself in first and goal 21 seconds, one timeout. You definitely want to find shots into the end zone. And that was a great play by Huff, too, you know, knowing that I've got to get this first down if I'm not going to be able to get out of bounds. Mean stiff arm right there. Credit to Searcy, who as he was going down, brought Huff down with him. It's all so about getting it to the ground. So second and goal from right at the 10. Anderson motions out of the backfield. Huff looking to the right side. End zone incomplete. Had Kendall Dean on the end breaking route, but the pass just a bit too far out front of him. Now you're setting up third and goal. Again, not a bad decision by Huff. I think that if he gets it a little, little bit earlier before, kind of put a little air under it, he finally can probably run into it. But I do think <laughs> defensive back probably got a little tug as he was crossing his face. But again, if the refs don't see it, it didn't happen. Third down and goal here for Furman. They've got to hurry. Play clock's at six. They've got one timeout left, but you don't want to use it here. Play clock at two. Furman does get the snap off, but before the snap, they'll use their final timeout. timeout. Furman. Furman. It's their final timeout of the half. This will be a full timeout. timeout. Damien, now this is interesting. You're out of timeouts for Furman, and if you don't throw this in the end zone, it's going to be a fire drill to get the field goal unit on. Absolutely not. I mean, I've seen a lot of things happen, but that is a bad, bad clock management deal right there. You're not getting the play in until late, and then you rush. And, and I actually had to snap off before it went to zero, but I'm wasting a timeout after an incomplete pass when it's already stopped, something you definitely don't want to see. So Furman now out of timeouts. One of the biggest plays of the first half forthcoming. 
Furman offense that's racked up almost 200 yards of offense in the first half. Didn't have a rhythm early, but two straight scoring drives, and they've driven another 45 yards here after the Furman defense turned Sanford's offense away on fourth and short. This is a big, big down right here. You don't think Coach Boone's going to be fired up if they can find a way to make a stop, especially keep him in bounds if you possibly can. But again, just the clock management there on this drive for Furman, that's something that Coach Hendricks is going to be pretty, pretty upset with himself about, having to waste a timeout after an incomplete pass. Let's bring up a big third down. On third and goal, Huff looking to the end zone, wants to go to Harris in the corner. That is incomplete. Flags fly. It was physical coverage from Dante Pollard. And that is going to give Furman a fresh set of downs. Pass interference, defense. 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 Penalty curtain in the end zone. Ball, 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 ball two yard ball, line. line, automatic first down. Coach Hatcher, you can foul tell on the sideline, he's frustrated. But the thing was, I will say it was a good sale job by the receiver jumping, almost leaning into him to cause the contact. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I feel you right there, Pollard. I mean, what, it, what are you supposed to do? You, you're facing him, you're doing everything you're right, technically. And then with the, the acting job and the sale job by the receiver. Frustrating to see, but now you're in a you're in a fourth down situation here. Eleven seconds to go. Biggest thing you have to score. And Sanford will take a timeout. They didn't like their defensive alignment. Sanford. This is their this first timeout of the half. It'll be the third be second. second timeout. timeout. You can see Sanford head coach Chris Hatcher still furious with that pass interference call. He sold it well. He definitely sold it. And again, like there was, wasn't was much contact at all going into it. But yeah, Coach Asher has a right to be upset. That outstretched arm there from Pollard across Harris. But through the flag, and there has been a penalty discrepancy here in this first half. Just one penalty committed by the Paladin, six for 60 yards against Sanford here in this first 30 minutes. And Coach Hatcher knows the just at the moment and with that happen, you get him in the fourth and goal, there's you know potentially a couple seconds left where you may can get the ball, but now you reset the chains, find yourself in first and short there inside the red zone. And again, if you can keep him in bounds, it'd be great, but the chances of them scoring start to go up. On first and goal from the two, Huff looking left in the end zone, incomplete. Pollard again breaks it up and another late flag comes in. Joshua Harris is down in the end zone. The clock stops with six seconds left. And Harris a bit slow to get up. I think what the people are, I think what the coaches are upset about is how late the flag ended up being thrown. Personal foul, targeting. Number one of the defense. The previous play is in the further route. Cortland Marsh trying to come in there and break it up. He was indicating it was with his forearm and shoulder, but we'll get a look at it here. Right, and that's kind of what I thought initially there at the end. I thought he got him with the shoulder. And it I does, but it's to the head to area the head of Harris. Area. And that's kind of the gray area where you find those plays and I mean, and I got to give, you know, credit to the defense back. What is he supposed to do in a situation like that when it's such a bang, bang, he's reaction like, hey, I don't want him to catch it. If he catches it, it's a touchdown. But in that situation, he's kind of just bracing for the impact. Not really sure what he could, what else he could have done in that situation. This is a big call here. Cortland Marsh, one of the best defensive backs in the Southern Conference, a preseason all-conference selection. Former SOCON Defensive Player of the Week earlier this year as well. The system is currently down. Therefore, the ruling on the field will stand. Targeting by number one in the defense. is is disqualified for the remainder of the game. So the replay system not working at the moment here at Cybert Stadium. Referees deferring to the call they made on the field. Cortland Marsh is lost for the rest of the game. That is a huge blow to this Sanford defense and an unfortunate set of circumstances. 
that's the first time I've heard a call like that with the replay being down. So I guess by rule you have to stick with the call that's on the field. But again, in the situation, what if what if we go into another situation where there's a bang bang play and the replay is back? Would they be able to go back to this call? But I guess in this situation, you have to just play it as is. But again, you know, I hope you know Thomas isn't too severely injured. But you never want to see in a situation like that. But to not even be able to go back and look for it because it was a bang bang play and up here for us it doesn't necessarily look like targeting because I don't know what Marsh is supposed to do in that situation but to have the replay down and not be able to even go back and look at it or that's 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 unfortunate we did have a replay available to us earlier we've already had one replay review in this game Stanford head coach Chris Hatcher getting the explanation right now. Joshua Harris still down, by the way, in the end zone. Extended look at one of the best, if not the best, receiver in this Furman receiver core. And he's now very slowly getting to his feet. I think he's just going to go straight to the Furman locker room this close to the end of the half. And you hate to see situations like that. Hope all is well with Thomas. He's able to, you know, recover and be able to come back and make a play in this game but again just that replay like you know, if we go back and l what happens later in the game if it's a bang bang play and another situation were to happen I just I just think it's completely unfortunate for Marsh that he has to be ejected from the ball game due to target but also not even have it, it'd be something different if you could have a, a court system where you can kind of go back and look to see if it actually was, and again, please if, please even they the could get the clock to eight seconds. television replay, eight seconds on I, the just game clock, game please. Please. I just think that's extremely unfortunate. And now some time being tacked on as well, from six seconds to eight seconds. So Furman with the decision here, no timeouts operating from now the one. And I assume you take one more crack if you're Furman, or you play it safe and take your three points here. They're bringing the offense back, so no timeouts. Can't afford to get stopped short of the end zone. Furman trying to close this half with one more score. Huff takes the snap, rolling right, looking, doesn't have anyone open. A one-handed leap, did he get a foot down? He did! Ben Ferguson with one of the best catches you'll see. Touchdown, Furman. What a play. Ferguson at the absolute last second sticks his paw out there one-handed. That is an amazing, an amazing catch. Ben Ferguson, are you kidding me? He got the right foot down, and all he needed was one foot and one hand. The first touchdown of the year for Ben Ferguson, the extra point is good. 17 straight scored by the Paladins with three seconds left in this first half. And I know if you're Coach Hatcher in this, this Sanford team, you are livid. You are livid because again, that pass interference tacked on with a targeting after that, adding two seconds onto the clock, and then a play like that. I'm. That has to be for, for so frustrating. And defensively, I, there's nothing else you really can do. You're draped over them. You're playing great coverage. And sometimes it's just, you know, great offense over great defense. Again, when these two teams met a year ago in Greenville, the story from the Furman side was the officiating, how they felt hard done in that contest with Sanford. Here late in this first half, Pass interference, extends the drive, a targeting call, takes away one of Sanford's best secondary players, extends it even further. And Furman cashes in on the mistakes. Ben Ferguson with one of the catches of the year in Southern Conference football. A squib kick here is gonna be fielded and fumbled and still fumbled. It's eventually gonna be recovered by Sanford, but that's gonna be the end of the first half. And Let's what an end of the half it was. Sanford scored the first seven points a minute and 32 seconds into the game. Since then, it's been all Furman. 
the Paladins, the number four team in the country, will head into the locker room of the field. Home to the Sanford Bulldogs, just about ready to get quarter number three off and running. Furman on top of Sanford, 17-7. First big SoCon road test of the year for the favorites in the league. The number four team, the Furman Paladins. So far, so good. Plus 10 and getting the football to start the third quarter. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Taylor Kaufman, your crew here today. Let's see what this second 30 minutes has in store after a busy first 30 minutes. I'm a chance to tack on to their lead right away as we are just about ready to go. Just waiting on our official to give us the go ahead. Henry Bishop, the senior kicker, ready to send it deep for Sanford. Anderson Jr. back to return along with the freshman Colton Hinton. It's been a fun day so far. What does this second half have in store for us? Bishop ready, Sanford ready. Furman ready as well. This second half off and running. Wayne Anderson Jr. will let this go out of, out of the end zone for a firm and touchback. Down below, Taylor Kaufman, the third member of our crew, standing by with a very special guest. Hey, guys, I'm here with Dr. Beck Taylor, the president of Sanford. You guys just renamed the stadium at halftime. What does that mean to be able to have Pete, uh, Pete, Pete Hanna Stadium now here on this football field? Well, it's a significant day in the life of Sanford. Pete Hanna is a historic figure in Sanford's history. He scored one of the very first touchdowns here. Uh, in this stadium and has been just so generous to the university over the years. Of course, we, we already have the Pete Hanna Center where our basketball and volleyball teams play. And now to be able to honor Pete in this way is just a tremendous uh, opportunity for us. I heard he's a really humble guy. What would he say or did he say anything to you about the honor? Well, I think he would want you to know that he loves this university. It shaped him into the person that he is today. And he gives a lot of credit to his experience here. And then I think he, he would also say he really believes in our Christian mission here at the university. He loves the Lord. And I think those two things have really compelled him to, to give back to this place. Alrighty. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks, Appreciate Taylor. it. Yeah. We'll send it back to you guys. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks to Dr. Taylor for his time. Busy halftime here at the newly renamed Pete Hanna Stadium. Furman on second down. Tyler Huff keeps it in his track down from behind by Josh Mathiason. It's going to set up about third down and maybe a short three. And that's something that we saw earlier on in the game as well with Huff using his legs and that's a quarterback designed run, being able to stick it in there. Now you're in third down and a big stop right here if you can find one if you're Sanford's defense because we know how this offense has done, you know, plays, played and putting plays together and continuing to drive in this field. Furman five of eight on third down in the first half. Huff, quick drop, wanted to take off. He's wrapped up. Noah Martin brings him down behind the line of scrimmage. And Furman goes three and out to start the second half. That was a great job by the Sanford defense, especially in the secondary, <laughs> keeping everything manned up. And there we go. We see Noah Martin on the delayed stunt, wrapping around and finding the hole. Had Huff had to eat it. Didn't find anywhere to go with the football. Big, big play for the Sanford defense. That's already nine tackles, a game high. The preseason all SoCon selection, Noah Martin. Punt high in the air, fair caught by Chandler Smith at his own 31. That's where Sanford's offense will get the football trailing by 10. And Damian, it was such a quick strike to start the game for the Sanford offense, but they came up empty after that. Yeah, and they've had their plays. They've had some big explosives come back due to penalties. You had a touchdown taken away there from uh, with a face mask on the offensive line on top of you know Ty King early on the first on one of those drives had a big drop on a big play that would have been a big gain and you know it's kind of just the self-inflicted wounds that we've seen this uh the Sanford offense that we're not just you we're not used to Here's a quick throw to the flat RJ Starkey makes the catch got to the outside and to the 35 yard line in Cali Chiswick there on the stop for Furman Again, that's just an extended run play, something we've seen from this offense, just hitting the bubble. And again, that R.J. Starkey, he's considered, quote, unquote, a tight end. He's an H-back, but he's athletic enough to catch a bubble, work outside, and get a few yards. Transfer from Penn's got three catches today. Second down and six for the Bulldogs. Gets to three-man rush. Hires has all kinds of time, wants to go deep. Looking for Ian Cousin just a bit too far out front of him. 
And they had the play, too. They had a shot. I thought he was actually going to look at Chandler Smith right here. He kind of stalks him and hits him on the go ball, the blow by. But it's a good throw just right out of the Ustrich's hands. Just the fourth incompletion today for Hires in this Sanford passing attack. Pressure on third down. It's picked up, and Sanford moves the sticks. It's R.J. Starkey again out near midfield for 14 yards. Yeah, just going across, finding the green grass. And that's a great throw by Mike. Put it on him, kept him running. He moved the chains right there on a the big third down. Monte Witherspoon picks a hole, gets into Furman territory all the way to the 44, a pickup of about seven. Sanford wanting to move quickly. There's a Furman Paladin down there. Right on top of the logo, it's, that's the Chovka. Preseason second team, all SoCon selection. Big piece of the interior of this Furman defense. Tachovka, one of the best on this Furman. Because this is a place where our passions go. The quietest the locker room had been. It's just because they're really focused. And he said in order for them to get the win today, they're just gonna have to keep doing what they were doing there at the end of the first half and keep up that intensity on both sides of the ball. Thanks, Taylor. Chandler Smith's got another grab. His fifth today, a team high. That'll move the chains. Right back on the move again, inside the Furman 35. A quick throw, Brandon Jenkins quickly dropped. Ivan Yates was closest to him. They've done a good job right here of just spreading the wealth. And again, with this air raid system, a lot of guys are gonna get a lot of touches all over the field. And they've been able to find ways to get the freshman the ball and then make it an intent to get 84 the ball. And he's a, he's a great playmaker. His third catch is good for about six yards, maybe seven there. Brings up third down and a long three or a short four. Hires quickly claps for the football. Everyone looked like maybe they were a step late. And DeMonte Witherspoon is brought down for a loss. Sanford sideline wanted a face mask, didn't get one. That whole play just seemed out of whack. And I mean, like you're seeing late delays as far as going off the ball. Missed the face mask right there. Luke Clark maybe gets away with one. It's fourth down and six now. Sanford keeps the offense on the field. Big fourth down. Furman brings pressure. It's picked up. The fade for Jenkins down the sideline. Lot of contact, and here come all the flags. There's a flag down in the end zone where Jenkins was hand fighting with Yates, and then there's another flag down middle of the field where it looked like maybe Michael Weiss, the Sanford tight end, was trying to get out on the route. And that was a great play by Jenkins. Again, he stacks him, and where the only thing that he, the defensive back could have done was reach around him. And that was a great play and very veteran move by the freshman. Seen a whole lot of Micah Robinson today. It's been mostly Blackshear and Yates at corner today for Furman. Holding, Holding. Defense. defense, number six. Number six. The penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense. 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 defense, number 22. That penalty is enforced from the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. So holding against Ryan on vice and then the pass interference call against Yates right here. Yeah, and a bunch of hand checking and that was actually a good job by Jenkins kind of just wrapping his arm around him to initiate some of the contact. So a fresh set of downs for Sanford at the Furman 15. Witherspoon on the carry, not gonna get a whole lot. Turned away right around the line of scrimmage by Braden Gilby. Gilby's made a couple of big plays already in the middle of this Furman defense. Good to see Matt Sachov come back in the mix as well for Furman. So just a short timeout for the defensive tackle. On second and 10, hires a clean pocket, looking over the middle, Jenkins makes the catch. Touchdown Sanford, it's the second TD of the day for Brendan Jenkins. And that was a great play call right there. They caught him in man and you see at the middle of the field just start to open up for the dig on the backside. That was a great pickup 
and understand him, man. It was a great route, stacking him and getting into the blind spot, but also just finishing across his face. Great play by Brendan Jenkins. Freshman from Hoxton, Georgia, is having a day. Wilson Beaverstock's extra point is up and good. And Sanford's offense finds the end zone. 10 plays, 69 yards, capped off by the second touchdown of the day for Brendan Jenkins, his fourth career touchdown. And Damian, another look here, just what this Sanford offense was looking for. Absolutely, and it's exactly what they needed for a drive like this to end in the end zone. And again, freshman going out and making plays and really understanding where he is in this position. And I asked, you know, during our meetings, I was like, have you had a freshman this dynamic to come in? And how is he able to be so confident in the way that he plays? And everybody speaks so highly of Brendan and who he is just as a person on and off the field. They say he's one of the hardest workers that they have. And again, with him being a freshman, going out and making plays, the way that he's doing, and to have a guy like Michael Hires throwing him the ball and confidently knowing that, hey, if 84 is open, he's going to get the ball. So Sanford scores a touchdown for the first time since a minute and 40 seconds into the game. Just like that, we got a three-point game, 17-14 Furman, less than five minutes into the second half. Henry Bishop sends it deep again. Lane Anderson, Jr., a long look at this. He'll bring it out from his own one. Anderson across the 20, barrels his way to the 25. That was a collision there at the 25-yard line. It was indeed. Looks like C.J. Douglas, the backup safety for Sanford, wrapped him up. Maybe some extra love there from Thomas Neville as well. Right here for the Paladin offense, the biggest thing is just want to have some sort of consistency. Want to be able to get at least one first down as the first drive they had to, you know, go three and out. Right now we find yourself up three, and it hasn't really been a difficult, you know, showing defensively. And a big Sanford. play there on the RPO. Luke Shiflett off and running inside the Sanford 30. A chunk play gets the Paladins offense started. And that's the thing about the play action. Once you flash it, the linebackers have to step up and honor it and able to huff to stand back up, hit them on the crossing route right there on the bang post. And again, that was a big, big play on first down. Find yourself now in plus territory. Paladin offense looking to roll. Longest passing play of the day so far for Furman as Huff keeps and is met. A gain of maybe a couple. Jaden Mosley there on the stop along with, looks like Tyrese Ross. By the way, have not seen Furman's wide receiver number one, Joshua Harris, who wears number two. I've not seen Joshua Harris come out for the second half after that targeting call against Cortland Marsh. Obviously Marsh, one of the best safeties on this Sanford team done for the day, but haven't seen Harris yet either. Second down and eight off the play fake. Rolling right, the throw is caught. It's Shiflett again. And maybe it's Luke Shiflett who steps up with no Josh Harris. Absolutely, and Shiflett, he had a wonderful route right there. He goes and kind of stacks him up, up, working back on the comeback and just flash his numbers and Huff hits him right there on the sideline, able to make a play. But again, it's been the, the, you know, the drive of 12, being able to continue to move the chains that had an explosive play earlier to get him down to plus territory right there picking up a big first down. Three catches, 71 yards for the MTSU transfer. It's been in the Furman program quite some time. Give to Roberto on first down. He cuts it up inside the 10, gets all the way down close to the five. So a gain of seven there on first down, and the Paladins are knocking on the door. Think about Dominic Roberto again, a big body back, being able to just press forward. And again, if he falls forward as a bigger guy, it's going to take more than just one person to bring him down. So from the five, Furman can still pick up a first down inside the three. Out of the pistol, another give for Roberto. Inside the two, he's in. Touchdown firm and a quick response from the Paladins. And that's what you want to do as the Paladin offense. You give up a score, but one thing you want to do is to return that favor, put six points on the board. And Dominic Roberto, again, a big body back. Just want to hand it off to him and just see what he can do. Finishes it in the end zone. So the Paladins punch right back. 
The extra points is up and good from LaPro. 24-14, Furbin's 10-point advantage restored. We've had some action. Well, the Paladin fans in purple across the way have had plenty to smile about so far this afternoon. Furbin on top of Sanford, 24-14. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Taylor Kaufman, your crew here today. Damian, what a response there from Furman. Just five snaps. That drive all started with the big play here to Luke Shiflin. Yeah, it was literally six, 12, and eight. Three people that took you down there on that drive. And again, having two big catches, converting for first down, and not even overthinking it. Giving it to the big running back as he pummels his way to the end zone. And like you said, that was the immediate response that you needed to see for this Paladin offense. They went out there and went out there and executed. So each team with a touchdown here early in the second half. Sanford trying to see if their offense can punch back now. It hasn't really been a, a tough sledding. They find themselves in some third and manageable situations. They've been able to pick up a few yards against this Paladin defense. It's just, you know, like we saw last drive, being able to capitalize when you get those situations and not having those penalties to bring you back. So we saw a big, uh, heavy dose of Brendan Jenkins and, again, a guy that, a freshman, making an impact here in the game. On first down, a give for Jay Stanton, trying to cut it up. Picks up three, maybe four yards. Good run on first down. Brought down from behind by Bryce Stanfield, who was in there, along with Alex Mayer. So after four yards on first down, Hires drops the pass on second down. He is sacked. Brought down from the blind side by Mayer, the fifth Furman sack of the day. Yeah, he just beats the tackle around the edge. Just loops around, violent hands. Michael had no idea that he was hot. Ends up being a big, big sack, making it third and long for the Sanford offense. Third down and 14, a long ways to go here for Sanford. Higher steps up, wants to escape the pocket, throws it late, too low for Ty King. And this Furman defense forces Sanford three and out. That was a big, big sack right there on that second down play to make it third and long, and they applied a little bit of pressure. Jay was able to chip there on the tackle, but then again, the play just starts to crumble. Scramble drill rules start to apply, and they weren't able to execute and again. You find yourself in third and long. Now you got to punt it away to an offense that you just saw drive down the field in five plays to put it in the end zone. For the first time today, Sanford's offense has to come off the field in their own territory. Furman set to receive good field position. Will Thorley, a low line drive punt that bounces in front of Cali Chiswick and rolls to the 38. Chiswick does pick it up and get a few yards back. So Furman will take over just inside their own territory. They'll mark Chiswick out around the Furman 47. So 41 yard punt for Will Thorley. The biggest thing for this Sanford defense, man, we just saw them put a drive together. Now you're back on the field after a three and out. Really want to end this possession without giving up any points because that does put a lot of pressure on your offense to be able to go out and execute. But if you have a big, big stop in this situation, you don't want to put the game away and put it out of reach at 21 with this offense that's been clicking. On first down, Huff will take it himself and pay for it a little bit. Got a couple, but was hit hard. Noah Martin met him there. Jaden Mosley there as well, along with Garrett Morris. Feels like we've called Noah Martin's name a lot today. He's been all over the field and a guy that, you know, runs from sideline to sideline, making plays from that linebacker position. We got to give a lot of credit to Huff, too. I mean, we, we heard coming into it that he's a tough guy, but watching him in person, I mean, he's not afraid to stick it in there at all. He doesn't look to slide. He actually welcomes the contact, initiates it at times with his running ability. I mean, he's, he's a different type of quarterback for sure. Devin Smith brings down Dominic Roberto that time short of the sticks. It brings up third down and four. If you're Sanford, you get a big third down stop right here. And if you're Furman, this actually may be four down territory if you don't get it in third down. A situation where you want to kind of chew up some more clock and also get a first down. Full playbook open here for the Paladins. Once again, have been good on third down today. 
Huff off the play fake, wants to go deep. Looking for Ethan Harris, that's over the top of him, incomplete, and a late flag flies. The ref, the referee on this situation, you let them hand check and fight for a lot of the time while they were in the route. Pass interference, defense, number 36. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, All right, first down. If you're gonna allow the hand fighting and hand checking all the way down the field, you might as well just keep the flag in your pocket because it's not, it's not like he really had a play on it. It was kind of just an overthrow and he's not even working to, you know, working to get the ball, and it's not like he's impeding him from, you know, going up and making the play. If you're gonna, if you're gonna throw that flag, it's that's a that's a little ticky tacky for me, and I'm a receiver. Eight penalties for 75 yards against Sanford today. Just two penalties against the Paladins. A fresh set of downs as Dominic Roberto gets inside the 30, a pickup of around three on first down. Huge flax today that have been extended firm and drives. Yep, and that one right there is another one. It's you get them in third and short, third and medium, and you have them stopped. And, you know, potentially they may go for it on fourth down, but they may punt it, but you never know. But then you give them an automatic 15 because of the PI. And again, it's kind of been the tail of the tape for this Sanford program, especially this game. Another gift for Roberto on second down. Not a whole lot of room to work with, but he does pick up maybe a couple. Jaden Mosley in on the stop. Midnight Stewart was there as well. Along with Josiah Cotton. Find yourself in another third down position right here as we see you know, Roberto try to make something out of nothing. Another third down. If you can end this game, if you can end this drive with just a field goal, you consider yourself lucky after you've given up you know, an extra 15 on the pass interference, which I mean, as, as a defensive back, I don't know what more you can you do if you're just, I mean, the, like I said, the referee was letting him fight for a long time and then at the end ends up throwing the flag. On third and four, another give this time for Anderson, trying to find a crease, and he does. After contact, Anderson dives forward and picks up a first down, a gain of five. Patient running right there by Anderson, just kind of letting it happen, finding the crease, finding the hole, do what you can, work with what you got, tough running to get that first down. So Anderson picks it up and Furman can allow more clock to bleed here inside four minutes to go in the third. Six touches today for Anderson, three catches, three carries. He's in the backfield here on first down. Huff throws the swing out to the flats. That's caught in maybe a gain of about three for Baylor Hughes, just his eighth career catch. Pursuit to the sideline by Sanford. Devin Smith was over there, so Jonathan Searcy. The thing for this Paladin offense, they're being patient. They're not trying to do too much, calling their plays, taking their time, chewing as much clock as they can, and also just putting themselves in good positions, kind of reading everything out, not feeling rushed to do anything. On second and long, power pistol look. Huff gives to Roberto, who leaps forward. Kept the legs moving, and it took three or four Bulldogs to wrestle him to the ground inside the 15. Such a strong carrier. Somebody that's going to play a big factor as this game gets winding down later on, later on because defensively, you're not trying to tackle a 235-pounder, you know, every single snap as the time starts to wind on down. But, again, a lot of tough running. And, again, the third down situations for Sanford. You've seen them in third and medium, had them in third and long. Now you got them in third and short, and you can almost, you know, bet your money that it's going to be an eight's hand. It is a give for Roberto who cuts it back but can't find any room. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. A host of Bulldogs were there led by Midnight Stewart. That's a big stop right there on third down. And now you've got a decision to make if you're the Paladin offense. Do you want to go for the field goal? And I think they are. Yes, you see the, the package comes in for the field goal kicker to Put three on the board, don't want to overthink it. Big stop there. Midnight Stewart, Garrett Morrison as well. So here's Ian Williams, his second field goal try of the day. Now four for seven so far this year. That's a shorter kick. 
from 32 yards. And the low laser is no good. Wide left. And Furman comes up empty handed. Now how big was that third down stop against Roberto for the Sanford defense? And again, like to have, you know, given up a couple third downs on that drive and you start piecing it together, piecing it together in situations like that, you end up with a missed miss field goal and put your offense back on the football field with a chance to go down and score. That's a big, big stop right there defensively. You'll take it however you come. So after Furman comes up empty-handed, Sanford's offense back on the field from their own 20. 98 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Here's a play fake on first down. That pass looked like it was deflected and it's incomplete in the direction of Kadir Ismail. Have a look here, did someone get a hand up? It looks like Mayer got a paw up there. On second down, RJ Starkey makes the grab near the Furman sideline and pushes forward out across the 30 to the 31. R.J. Starkey's got 11 yards and a first down. Get R.J. Starkey, a bigger body guy, being able to work out in space, get you a first down. And again, for the Sanford offense, you put it, you know, put this in the end zone, you got ourselves a different ball game. Quick catch there for Chandler Smith, puts his head down, gets to the 34-yard line. 225 passing yards so far today for Michael Hires. Couple of touchdowns, no interceptions. Trying to engineer another Sanford scoring drive. Against a three-man rush. Has all sorts of time looking for an open receiver. Finds one in Ismail. There's just across the line to gain to move the sticks again. That was great protection by the offensive line. I know they were just rushing a few, but to hold up that long and still be able to put a, a drive together, put a pass together to make it a first down. That's a big, big play. Ishmael again, a grab, this time a short catch, but able to get some yards after contact out near midfield. Hadn't seen a whole lot of the Villanova transfer so far today, but he's come to life on this drive. Three targets, a couple of catches. Third quarter winding down as Hires drops to throw again and is brought down. The sixth sack of the day for the Paladins. This time it's Luke Clark. Ends up getting attacked by his blind side and a big sack right there, making it third and long as we get ready for the fourth quarter. So a big third down coming when we start quarter number four. Three quarters in the books. Furman on top of Sanford 24-14. You're watching Southern Conference football on ESPN you to see how you can get involved. Three quarters in the books here at Pete Hanna Stadium. The fourth about to get going with a big third down and long. Furman on top of Sanford, 24-14. Michael Hires in this Sanford offense trying to keep this drive alive. Hires throws, that's caught by Starkey. He breaks a tackle and gets close to first down yardage. We'll see where they mark him out. And that was a great play by Michael standing up in that pocket knowing he was about to get hit there at the last second. Still delivering a strike and RJ Starkey with the effort to be one yard short. But yeah, you have to, you have to figure out it, man. If you can get this one yard and keep this momentum rolling for your offense, you don't want to give Furman another possession with empty, with empty stats. On fourth down and short, first down picked up. Demonte Witherspoon plows forward for four yards and Sanford moves the chance. Tough running by Witherspoon as well, man. Just being absolutely physical, pressing the hole, seeing the green grass, continuing to move the chains for this Sanford offense. It's 57 yards on the ground today for Sanford when you take out the sack yardage. Brendan Jenkins makes the quick grab and gets out of bounds around the Furman 40, ushered that direction by Braden Gilby, Kelly Chiswick there as well. 14 minutes to go, Sanford trying to make this a one possession game again. Hires gives it this time, nowhere to go. Xavier Stevens broke through. He was the initial guy through, Bryce Stanfield joined him. It's a loss for Witherspoon. That's a great job just knifing through 
squeezing up and, I mean, just making the initial contact in the backfield. Big play. Luke Clark, the first man through. On third down and eight, Higher steps up. Throwing, that is caught. What a catch. <laughs> Brandon Jenkins was draped by Travis Blackshear, and it didn't matter. That's, that's again, that's a freshman. But you wouldn't be able to tell with strong hands, defender draped all over him. Such a great play. First down, Hires keeps and got a hit for his troubles. Alex Mayer was there, and Hugh Ryan was crashing down from his safety slot as well. And that was a great job by Michael Tu working back to the back side to just to find Jenkins to convert that first down. Sample to reset the formation, change the play here on second down and long. change it again right as they were about to snap it play clock at six for hires and the Bulldogs offense clean pocket for hires wants to go long RJ Starkey dives and couldn't haul it in that was a great check by Sanford not sure what play they may have had originally but almost like a stall and go with the post and the wheel. That was a great release by R.J. Starkey. Michael, if he leads a little more to the outside, may have a touchdown. Leaves a little bit of change in the middle. Give Kalachizik a, a play to make there on the inside. On third down, almost intercepted. Braden Gilby might have had a pick six if he hold it in. Instead, it's fourth down. I th I'm pretty sure Michael, as soon as he released it, knew he made a bad decision right there. Again, leaving it on the front side of the hitch and just a tight, tight window to force it in there. I don't think he saw it, but really avoided disaster by him not having good hands, and that's why he plays defense. This would be a 48-yard field goal. Instead, Sanford going for it on fourth down and nine. Hires with time. Steps up in the pocket, will try to get it himself. He will, across the 20, Hires uses the legs to keep the drive alive. Got to give a lot of credit for the offensive line, being able to protect for that long, and for Michael Hires to just step up and say, hey, I, it's fourth down, it's do or die situation, uses his legs to make a play. And on first down, guess who, man? Cali Chizik is having a day. Drops Brendan Jenkins for no gain. In fact, that's a loss of one. And the bad news is Chiswick is down after the play. So an official's timeout to check on the injured player. The redshirt senior, Callie Chiswick, came into the day with 19 total tackles this year. Dan Stadium, Floyd Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Taylor Kaufman here with you on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Just outside Birmingham, 72 degrees. 10-point game, less than 12 minutes to go, but Sanford just outside the red zone. Trying to cut this to a one-possession game again. Michael Hires extending the drive on a fourth down and long a couple of snaps ago, using his legs for really the first time today. Out of the stoppage, second down and long. Sanford shows that reverse for the second time today. Chandler Smith has room across the 10, to the five, to the goal line, he's in. Touchdown, Sanford. Chandler Smith makes it a one score game. Big time players make big time plays in key situations and that's what you have to do is find ways to just give five the ball. There we saw it earlier in the game, a hit for a big play. How about your quarterback getting in there in the mix to seal off a block and a big time play for Chandler Smith. Finds himself in the end zone and that potential only down by three. You go back to that missed field goal that they had for the Paladin offense and now we've got ourselves a ball game and a pretty exciting finish here. Extra point from Beaverstock is good. And we've got a three point game with 11.23 to go. Berman 24, Sanford 21. It's the fourth touchdown of the year for one of the best receivers in FCS football, Chandler Smith. He had 11 touchdowns last year. He's got four now this year, but Damian, this is first on the ground. Yeah, it was pretty exciting too, man. Something that we saw earlier on in the game in kind of a similar position of the football field. 
of just trying to find a way to just give him the ball in different scenarios, different situations. And, I mean, when you have an explosive playmaker like that, you just have to find innovative ways to get it to him. And we've seen that be a staple in this Sanford offense. It's almost like their utility bag. They can always go to it. It's like, hey, what's the way we can give uh, Chandler the ball? We can find a way to get our athletes in space. Boom, it's a reverse like that. Taylor Kaufman, you're down on that Sanford sideline. Michael Hires, the Sanford quarterback. He's been trying to ooze positivity most of the second half. You're right, you guys. Uh, Hires did after that last third and out. He was pretty calm and focused, and he told his receivers, he said, y'all did perfect, but if you see me scrambling, just stay put. And that's exactly what happened there on the fourth down, and it turned into some important points there for Sanford. Thanks, Taylor. 317 yards of offense for Michael Hires. The Sanford attack, they're back within three. 24-21, we're gonna have a fun finish here in Birmingham today. Henry Bishop tees it up. And a short kick. But Anderson comes up to the 14 to catch. Anderson across the 25, across the 30, maybe the 31 yard line. And there's a Sanford player down Behind the play, that looks like it might be Jordan Russell, the reserve linebacker. Well, you've seen that construction on the north side of the Pete Hanna Stadium today. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Some of those construction workers putting in a Saturday shift. Got some free Coke, some free Powerade, getting a chance to watch the game. No one likes to work on a Saturday, but it helps when you get some free stuff. Absolutely. It's been a joy every broadcast that we've had with those guys, man. They seem to have a lot of fun here on watching football on a Saturday. Tyler Huff and the Furman offense back to work, and Huff keeps. He's got a big seam across the 40 to the 45 out near midfield. 19 yards on Tyler Huff's keeper to get the drive kick started. That was a great pull read, too, man. He actually fooled me. I thought Roberto had the ball, and I see six just shooting across the football field, man, and he's been a tough, tough guy to bring down. And like we talked about during the, the show this morning, it's when we look at what Tyler Huff does with his legs, you knew it would have to be a pivotal point, and they're not afraid to run him just as much as they run the running back. Pulls it out this time, but his RPO slant is knocked down. Looks like Garrett Morris might have gotten a piece of it. Tyler Huff, he talked about his toughness. This is the game he wanted to play in. As a look at the replay, it was Morris who got a piece of it. Huff, starting quarterback all of last year, two for Furman as they went to the FCS playoffs. The one regular season Southern Conference defeat came in a game against Stanford where Huff was unable to go. It's the only game he missed last year en route to an excellent campaign. On second down, a gift for Roberto who bounces it outside. He's got green grass in front. Inside the 20 before being chopped down by Morris. You figured you would probably get one of those this game, able to work outside, hit the edge, and make a big, big play for a big man who's been able to run the ball pretty effectively all game. And like we talked about earlier, man, when you get to this level, when you get to this game here at the end, you're going to have to look at number eight at 230 pounds. And he's full of muscle. and He's a hard, hard runner. 16 carries, 102 yards today for Dominic Roberto. Who's got the carry again. This time it's brought down and wrapped up for maybe a gain of one. Looks like Mackay Gilbert, who got him around the legs. Roberto earns a much earned rest. Herman's offense been balanced today. 205 through the air, 190 on the ground. Back in the red zone again, trying to restore their two score advantage with less than 10 minutes to go. Huff rolling right, throws, and just a short gain there. The catch was made for not a ton by Parks Kissinger. Just the second catch of the year for Kissinger, the transfer from Michigan State. Right now, big third down for Sanford. You got him in third and long situation here, so you won't be able to run the ball. 
But again, for Huff, you have to be able to create some sort of pressure up front, but also understand if he leaks out, he's a dangerous runner down here in the red zone. Furman 6 of 11 on third down today. On third and long, Huff throws the slant. It is caught and short of the line to gain. Baylor Hughes was stuck around the 12. The late flag being thrown, not sure what happened, but that's a big, big hit by Noah Martin, too, just ensuring that he wasn't going to get any more yardage after that catch. And we'll see what the flag is. This is... Goes without saying, a crucial call one way or the other. Furman would have a decision to make. It'd be about fourth and five. And indications are it's against Sanford. So now Sanford's got a choice to make, depending on the nature of the flag. Do you give Furman another crack on third and long, or do you climb the penalty and bring out fourth down? Pass interference, offense number 12. The ball was caught beyond the line of scrimmage. Ten, a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay down, third down. Huge penalty against Luke Shiflett, who is blocking downfield before the catch was made by Hughes. So it's offensive pass interference and 15 backwards for Furman. Yeah, he goes out. He's not even really running the route. I don't know if he's trying to rub him or something, but yeah, that's a big, big stop. And you've already seen them miss a field goal earlier, and now you're pushing them back. That's a big, big stop for the defense. If you can hold them again on this third down, it'll be an important play of the game. Third and 23. The Paladins need inside the 10 to move the chains. It's a give to Wayne Anderson, Jr., and he doesn't pick up a whole lot. Maybe a gain of three. Conservative call there for the Paladins on third down. And it's gonna set up a long field goal try. Instead, it looks like, yeah, it is gonna be a long field goal try here. Like you said, a very conservative play call. You would think they would try to try to at least shorten it up. Even if they didn't know, if they, even if they didn't have enough to gain, but you would want to at least put it in the air to give yourself a fighting chance. But so this is a long field goal. Axel LaPro from 46 yards, a low line drive is good. And the kick is good. A huge kick from the red shirt junior after Ian Williams missed earlier. LaPro comes on and knocks down a big kick to tack on three more Paladin points. Officially a 46 yard make for LaPro and Furman on top 27 21. Sanford getting the football back with less than eight minutes to go. Don't go anywhere. We've got a good one here in Birmingham. Welcome back to our coverage of Southern Conference football here on ESPN, the number four ranked team in the country, the Furman Paladins. On top of Sanford, 27-21. As we hit the final few minutes here of this game. Back and forth, it's been, Furman's had the lead most of the day, but Sanford has clawed back every time they've been down by double digits. And within a score here as the offense will come back out on the field to start from the 25-yard line. Such an important drive there defensively too, holding them to a field goal in that situation. And like you said, you go down here and score, kick the extra point, you're in the lead in this ball game. And an offense that really starting to find its groove, find its gel, completed a very long drive, and also can stack that up in this drive as well. So first down and 10 here for Sanford. This Furman defense gets Callie Chiswick back on the field to start this drive. Hires a clean pocket, looking middle of the field, too tall for Chandler Smith. Good coverage there by Chiswick, who is with him stride for stride. Checking a shot play right out the gate. They're on first down, loosen that secondary up, let them know that, hey, we're not afraid to go out, you know, break some tendencies, stand up and throw the ball. Quick throw to DJ Rias on second down. Rias across the 30, 35, 40. Did he stay in bounds? No, he stepped out of bounds around the 32-yard line. 
Try is a chance to show off the sprint speed, but he's gonna be out of bounds short of the first down, a gain of maybe seven, depending on where they mark him. Man, you hate to see that too, because he did press the sideline kind of close, but also he gotta be able to show off that speed. Got his first game back. Hard to tell where he stepped out there. On third down and short, I don't think Sanford got it. Give to Jay Stanton, and he is shy of the 35-yard line. Officially marked at the 34, so fourth down and one. Sanford's already gone for it on fourth down three times today. They're two out of three. And of course, trailing by six with seven minutes to go. They're going again from their own 34-yard line. Fourth and one, and Hires wasn't ready for the snap. Not everybody on the same page. Flag on the play. And I wonder if this may be against Furman for clapping, because I don't think Hires clapped for the football. Delay game, kick pass, number 43, disconcerting signals. Five penalty results in a first down. So it is against Braden Gilby. He clapped on the defensive side of the ball. You can see him there. And that triggered the Sanford center kicker, on the game clock, please. So a five-yard penalty against Furman allows Sanford to move the chains. Thank you. Disconcerting signals allow Samford to keep the drive alive from their own 39. Give to Jay Stanton, who maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Just nothing there in the interior today. Matt Sachovka, his fourth tackle for loss this year. Yeah, those have been tough to get in between the tackles for Jay getting started today. And also defensively, I mean, gifted him a first down there on, th on fourth and one. And let this drive continue. Hires under pressure, trying to escape. Can't get out, he's dropped for a big loss. This Furman front comes through again. Sachovka was there, so was Jack Barton. Michael trying to fight him off, try to feed him off as much as he, as he could, but the grip was just too strong. Big time sack right there, puts you in third in a very, very long situation. Will officially be third down in a long 20 or a short 21. Six minutes to go here in quarter number four. Hires throws quickly, got Chandler Smith across the 35 to the 36, so some of that yardage back. But it's still gonna be fourth and 12 or 13 and Sanford's gonna have to punt the football away. Yeah, and you know how this clock is starting to be a factor in decision making. Put a lot of pressure on your defense right here. You definitely got to bow up, but again, that sack by the Sanford front, by the Paladin front, was huge. Put him in third and forever, and you're just trying to claw back and get as much room as you possibly can for this punt. Seven Furman sacks today has been a big factor as Thorley's end over end punt is gonna hit the turf around the 25 and then hit a Sanford player in that vicinity. Hit the long snapper, Alex Applefield. So that's where Furman will have the football. The market at the 24 yard line, 5.09 to go in the game. And for Furman, an offense that really was able to, you know, drive down if it wasn't for the pass interference, you got all the way down to the red zone, able to just settle for a field goal. But again, that clock is going to be interesting on this drive, five minutes. Again, we know the running ability of Roberto and Huff in the backfield. So it's going to be interesting to see what their game plan is moving forward just on this drive. Furman trying to salt this one away. A gift to Dominic Roberto. He turns the corner. He's got another chunk across the 45 near midfield. And Dominic Roberto's big day continues. He said I knew coming into the fourth quarter a guy that has really you know, pieced it together. A couple yards here, a couple yards there. Now we're starting to see those big, big runs for Dominic Roberto in this Furman offense. Roberto had 266 yards rushing coming into the day through Furman's first five games. He's got 128 and counting so far in this one. Pickup of 25 officially. A fresh set of downs for Furman. Clock continues to tick. Four and a half minutes to go. 
Huff keeps it this time, puts his shoulder down, picks up around three. And Searcy playing close to the line of scrimmage there on the stump, along with JoJo Cotton. Very, very selective play calling for the Paladin offense because they're not in a rush. You're trying to chew as much clock as you possibly can. And with those positive yardage, you're getting closer and closer to the first down. Sanford's defense is going to have to eventually start taking some timeouts the more this clock continues to bleed. Under four minutes, each side has all three of the timeouts remaining at their disposal. Another keeper for Huff, lost his footing. Did not get back to the line of scrimmage and Sanford will take one of those timeouts. Joseph Mera, who Sanford. the first Sanford tough to the ground, also this comes up limping a little bit. Now you got him in third along in this situation. That time out of the field, we'll take it with him. 3.38 to go, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, third down of the day coming up on the other side of this break. Back here at Pete Hanna Stadium, crowd coming to their feet. Three and a half minutes to go. And a big Southern Conference tilt. Furman on top by six, trying to put this game away. On third down and eight, Tyler Huff looking to his left, has time. Now flushed out to his right, back across his body, incomplete. Just a bit too tall for Nick Cannon. That was a big third down stop for this Sanford defense. I mean, Tyler, he had all day in the pocket, so a lot of credit to that offensive line being able to hold up that long. But always that working across your body, trying to throw a ball that far. That's a good play underneath by Pollard to distract him, but a little bit more up air up under that pass. There's no telling what could have happened, but that was a big down, big down and stop for this Sanford defense. Just the third Furman punt of the day, and Chandler Smith will fair catch it at the 11. So a 40-yard punt from Ryan Levy. Sanford's offense will have to go 90 yards inside of three and a half minutes to try to win the game. Well, we've got ourselves a ball game here, man. It's been fun on the call, and these are the situations that we get a chance to just sit back and revel of you know how great this game is and the great this of this game and it's on both sides I mean you've seen sacks by this Paladin defense really pushing the envelope to the Sanford offense you flip that around and not being able to finish drives for you know the Paladin offense a lot of numbers but not really able to put it all together makes for a wonderful ball game so with 322 to go reigning Southern Conference offensive player of the year trying to lead his team on one more drive Hires throws incomplete. Good coverage by Micah Robinson. And the guy we haven't got a chance to call much is Ty King. We saw the big play earlier go to him, but haven't really heard his name much as this game has gone on. Just three catches today for King. Stanford has pass receptions from 11 different receivers in this one. On second down, Hires throwing back across. DJ Rias made the grab, but it was in a ton of traffic. And Rias didn't get a whole lot. Alex Mayer had it red. They did indeed, and it's kind of a quicker screen, a quicker tunnel screen working back, and could have really been dangerous. Just whenever you have to leave your body, leave your feet on a screen pass, it's never a good recipe. But now, we're talking about the third down for the Paladin offense, this is a big time third down for this Sanford offense. Two wide receivers to the right of Hires with 2.40 to go in the game. On third down and nine, designed QB run for Hires. He's got some space. He's across the 20 and out of bounds. Michael Hires moves the chains with his legs again. It's a big time gutsy call right there by Chris Hatcher. You trust me, the quarterback is going to get it with his legs. Kind of like a delayed draw. But the result is a first down, and you'll take it. So Hires moves the sticks with 13 yards on third and long. 
on first down. Across the middle, that's caught. Ty King quickly dropped at the 33 by Caleb Williams. But that's a gain of nine yards. And they'll give him 10 yards and a Sanford first down. And now we've reached that point where every first down, the clock will stop. So now, again, with two timeouts for Sanford, you're just running your offense. You want to put yourself in a good position for the best plays. Right now, you've gotten yourself into a good situation and some breathing room. Hires running at a time, flag down as Hires gets out of the pocket and gets down and hit late. Crowd wants a flag. They're not going to get one as Gilby met Hires on the turf. And the flag down in the Sanford backfield in the vicinity of holding as Hires it's slow Push to get up. Has the face. 54. 54. Okay. Play second. So a hands to the face call against this Sanford offensive line is a 15 yard penalty. Against Sanford right here on this last drive, shooting yourselves in the foot with a big penalty right there. And Now you're, you're chopping at the bit here with only a few ticks left on that clock. Not the most ideal situation to be in right now. So Sanford backed up again inside their own 20. First down and very long. Hires under pressure, escapes for a moment, but not for long. Brought down by Luke Clark. The bandit on this Furman defense has sack number eight of the day. I couldn't tell, but it seemed like he might have gotten a little bit of a face mask. Hey, he did. He got a nice handful of it. That's, yeah, I can understand why Michael is frustrated, man. That's a bad call, bad miss. Hires over the middle into traffic incomplete. Gilby got a piece of it. Williams was in coverage. Yeah, and that's, that's a forced throw by Michael right there. He hadn't had his crosser clear out just yet, really tried to fit it in a, almost an impossible window with a bunch of Paladin bodies just right there. Of course, and I understand you want to find a way to get your playmaker the ball, but you definitely don't want to make a bad situation worse by forcing it in there too. A minute five to go. Sanford's offense has two plays to get 18 yards to keep the drive alive. Hires flushed out to his right, looking downfield, throws into the Furman sideline. Hires was hit as he let it go, and he is down at the 11-yard line. Michael Hires has battled today. He's thrown for almost 300 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Made a couple of big plays with his legs as well, but he has taken some hits today. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to see is him down. I couldn't tell if he was, as he was releasing it, I know that he was getting driven to the ground, and yeah. Definitely don't want to see that. And we all know, like, Michael Hires, he's a tough kid. He's, it's got to be something massive for him to, you know, to be on the ground. But you don't, don't want to see your quarterback, especially in this situation, fourth and extremely long. And now you've got to go to the backup quarterback. But we've seen Quincy. We've seen Quincy come in before in big-time situations. So we know the moment's not too big. It's just how many play calls do you have on your play sheet for fourth and 27? Michael Hires, the All-American quarterback. One of the best, if not the best, quarterback in FCS a season ago. But hurting right now. With his team backed up inside their own 20 in less than a minute to go. There is Quincy Crittenden, the backup quarterback here for Sanford, the junior from Decatur, Alabama. What a story he is, a former walk-on who actually started Sanford's first round game or second round game in the FCS playoffs. Drew for 314 yards and three touchdowns in their overtime win against Southeastern Louisiana. Michael Hires is able to make his way off. So it's Crittenden who will come on for fourth in the game here. <laughs> Sanford needs all the way to their own 44 to keep the hope alive. Furman potentially one snap away from picking up a massive road win. 57 seconds to go. Quincy Crittenden, the quarterback for Sanford with four wide receivers. On fourth down in the game, Crittenden trying to buy some time. Rolling to his left, he's sacked. 
fitting that one more Furman sack ends the day. Jeremiah Jackson. Jeremiah Jackson. And there is a Furman player down around the Sanford 12. Yeah, they got back there, caused a lot of pressure, and just not being able to get rid of the ball, don't really have a chance. But what can we say that we haven't said all game about this Paladin defensive front? They were making plays and big time plays in big situations, making second and longs, you know, making second and shorts end up being third and longs. And right there, fourth down play where your defense needs you, your team needs you, they make a play. Backup quarterback, I mean, Quincy Crittenden was, I mean, there was nothing he could really do in that situation. But how much pressure that this Paladin defense has applied to the Sanford offense. When Sanford's had time, they've had plays, but again, that many sacks, there it makes, kind of tells the tape of this game. There's Michael Hires down on the Sanford sideline right now. Tough way for him to finish this contest. But the story of the day, this firm in front, nine sacks, a loss of 60 yards. And they finish with a couple more big hits here late to salt away a road win. Huff under center will take a knee. Trying to let a little bit of clock bleed before he does go to the ground. Sanford's got two timeouts left. They'll take one right here with 45 seconds to go. We did have a one heck of a ball game to see and witness. And again, we talk about the playmaking ability of Tyler Hub and just him, his grit, his toughness, and how big were those big time runs from Roberto out the backfield as well in key situations coming out of a drive you know, having an over 40-yard run, and you kind of just look at how this game was physically on both sides. This Paladin offensive line creating some great some great holes, and then defensive line really applying that pressure to the Sanford offense. It's one of the most, if not the most, experienced defense in the Southern Conference, bringing back almost every starter from a defense that was top 10 in the country in SP Plus back in 2022, forced almost 30 turnovers as a unit brought back almost all the key pieces from that starting 11 they didn't force a turnover today but they did get a fourth down stop they get nine sacks as Huff takes a moment before going to ground again Sanford will take one more timeout with 40 seconds left and timeout. force timeout. Furman to Sanford. snap it Their final one more half. time this will be a one minute timeout, timeout. Damon, you talked about Dominic Roberto. 18 carries, 128 yards, and a touchdown for a guy that's playing in his 47th career game as a Furman Paladin today. Another one of the experienced leaders on this Furman team. Absolutely, and he's, I mean, he had a heck of a ball game. And again, with you running in at 230 pounds and ground and pound attack that this Furman offense likes to have. And when you've got a guy like that putting up numbers like that, you see why they're a top five program. You see why they're a top five team and really had high expectations going into the SOCON. And to get a gritty win like this is a big time movement there in the SOCON standings. Furman came into the day 12 and one over their last 13 Southern Conference game. That one loss came at the hands of Furman in Greenville a year ago. Paladins one snap away from avenging that lone loss in Southern Conference play last year. That'll get the game clock under 40 seconds. Sanford can't stop it anymore. And the Furman Paladins, a big stretch of games coming up on their schedule started today on the road against a Sanford team that upended them last year. The Paladins a gritty, grinded out 27-21 victory here at Pete Hanna Stadium today. Very, very good football game, man. Nothing much, I mean, there's nothing to take away from here except that, man, this Furman team, if they continue to play this way, 